The next stage of the 122 GHz Cassegrain antenna is to make the Delrin support spider. It's got a fine thread to take the 12mm spigot at the rear of the hyperbolic subreflector and has three ears to connect to brass support blades. Each ear needs to be drilled, tapped and then slotted. The body also needs to be drilled, tapped and split so the subreflector can be locked in place once it's adjusted. The first part of the operation is to turn the overall profile and then bore the hole and cut the internal M12 by 0.5mm thread. I found an offcut of Delrin that's 60mm diameter. That should be sufficient to make four subreflectors. The outside diameter is 50mm, so I'll turn it to size after squaring the end. It's important that the subreflector is positioned very precisely on the axis of the main parabolic dish and coincident with the prime focus of the parabola. The size is good so the next operation is to drill and tap the central hole. There's a clearance hole at the other end which I'm opening out to 13mm. I'm using these stub drills rather than starting the hole with a centre drill. They're very stiff and have split points so they self-centre very accurately. Not that that's an issue in Delrin obviously. Call it force of habit. A good habit, unlike my other habits which are mostly bad. The tailstock DRO is a marvellous thing for making holes the right depth without mental arithmetic. Now I'll cut the 30mm diameter feature which contains the screw thread and will act as the clamp around the threaded shaft of the subreflector. While it isn't strictly necessary to cut a groove at the end of the 30mm section, it looks spiffy, so I'm going for it. Anyway, it defines the edge of the clamping part, as opposed to the open part. Oh, whatever. Doing a bit of a chamfer of the edges to make it neat. As I'll be machining away any remaining grip stock and leaving only a short cylindrical section, I'll need to make a mandrel for the subsequent operations on the milling machine to form the mounting ears and cut the slots in the ears and in the side of the body of the spider. I'm using a rather nice M12 by 0.5mm HSS tap which I'll push in very gently using the tailstock and allow the thing to pull the tailstock along. I should really use a floating tap holder so that the thing doesn't tear the threads but I haven't got one. Maybe that's a future project. a fair selection of very fine threaded taps in all sorts of sizes. Some were donated and I've even bought a few for actual money. Well that seemed to go okay so I'll sham for the entry.
Oh. Slightly overshampered that. Bugger, as Grandma would say. I do like these Whitworth nuts on the compound slide rotation axis. Very nice proportions. It's already set to roughly the right angle, but I'm going to tweak it up just to make sure it's absolutely spot on. Cracky, that inside nut seen better days, hasn't it? It's a bit chewed. I'm zeroing the DRO so I can measure the distance to the outside edge of the groove. I'm not parting it off here, I'm just forming a deep groove slightly deeper than the depth of the tapered section so that I've got a defined edge to work to. There's a taper on the section with the mounting ears and the angle's just over 28 degrees so I'll use the compound slide to cut that taper. This Delrin is nasty stringy stuff but at least the chips aren't sharp. I'm using a narrow diamond shaped insert. I think it's a DCGT 11T308. And I'm cutting the taper in smallish bites so that I don't get any digging in. I mean, it's not like I've ever had any disasters before with the tool taking a chomp of the workpiece and sending it into orbit, is it? Softly, softly is the watchword. Oh, wait, that's two words. Boy, those chips are stringy. I'm parting it off properly now. My confidence is supreme. I'm on a higher plane and I've no worries. I've grabbed the nearest piece of round rod which just happens to be a transfer punch. I'm using it to catch the workpiece so it doesn't set off across the floor and get lost underneath something heavy. I've no idea what Yahtzee is so I won't say Yahtzee. We were more of a Mahjong sort of family anyway. Oh cool, another part I've made right. Amazing. I've got a short piece of this material left so I'll turn a section to 50 millimeters sufficient to make one more part. I've chucked it up the other way round and I'll cut another part out of what's left leaving with maybe 10 mil or so waste which I'll turn into a disc for something or other. I've tried all sorts of feeds and speeds and tools to try and get these dratted chips to break, but they don't. The only time I ever get them to break, I have to take such a severe cut that the surface finish is terrible.
These polished carbide inserts have a 0.8mm nose radius, which gives a pretty good finish on Delrin. I'm using an 11.5mm HSS Cobalt drill. It cuts very cleanly and just happens to be the correct drill size for an M12 by 0.5mm thread. So tap again and chamfer and try not to make it too deep. I'm going to flip it round and hold it by the 30mm section. Then I should be able to make one more part out of the 50mm that was in the chuck. Waste not, want not, as my grandma always used to say. But then, as previously mentioned, she used to say things like bugger when the cat bit her leg. I really miss my grandma. For once I actually used my brain and left a little bit of material on the 30mm spigot so that I could gronk down on this pretty hard and potentially mar the surface, but then clean it up afterwards. This level of foresight and planning is somewhat out of character.
The rest of the operation is pretty much a question of lather, rinse, repeat. Although this time I offer a new perspective. OK, so I moved the camera and fiddled with the lighting. I'm rubbish at photographing things, cleaning my machines and TIG welding. The list of things I'm rubbish at grows daily. Since I tightened up the gib and generally serviced the compound slide, I seem to have got rid of that problem with banding that appears whenever I'm doing any taper turning. It was particularly bad on the clear dielectric plastic lenses and I had to use fine scotch bright on the Rexolite 1422 to remove the periodic banding in case it had any effect on the millimeter wave RF. I believe the indentations were only about five micrometers so perhaps wouldn't have had any effect at all 122 gigs. So, taking life in my hands, I've chucked it up the other way around and I'm going to part it off. Fingers crossed. I resurfaced the disc that was remaining because I'm sure I can use it for something. Now to part off the other side. It looks like I've got away with it. I was a little concerned that nicking on that section that's now a machined finish would mar it, but I held it very, very gently and it looks fine. Now for the third part. I've already tapped this part, but I need to drill the clearance to 12 millimeters, then face the part off, and then drill the clearance hole in the final part and face it off, and then we're done. Now, of course, I've got almost no way of holding these pieces to do the machining of those ears. So part two of the video will be making a mandrel to fit in a collet chuck on the rotary table. Watch this space. <laughs> 